What's up? Welcome back, everybody, to episode 38 of the Punching Down podcast. It is the week after Thanksgiving. Uh, It's not the week after Thanksgiving. It's the Monday after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was last week uh, for American people. If you live in Canada, that would have been last month. And then if you live anywhere else, I don't know if they have Thanksgiving anywhere else. Uh, but it was an exciting Thanksgiving. It was pretty chill. A lot of turkeys were saved because uh, people weren't allowed to do Thanksgiving. Although it seems like everybody kind of did something for Thanksgiving. So I imagine that uh, there will be some fallout. New York, still everything's open. I'm as surprised as possibly any person. I've been expecting them to shut everything down in New York for at least like a week and a bit. They've been holding off I, um, for, I guess, just the, the thankfully, the positivity rates just aren't high enough to close everything down. So uh, they're not closing everything down, but tons of other places are closed down. It, honestly, I don't know if New York did such a good job of it or like they're just doing such a good job of it. I, they must be because it's so strict here. Uh, I, it is. It does seem to be creeping up. Um, Cuomo does his... Emmy Award win- winning governor Andrew Cuomo I wonder if his brother has an Emmy I wonder if he'll have an Emmy before his brother Who's actually on TV But he gave his little update thingy today And he basically says that uh, we're, we're close to What he called a pause That's like a nice way of putting you know, Shutting everything down He goes we're just going to pause We're just going to pause living That's all we're going to do It's just a nice little pause So uh yeah, we're close. I'm going to Florida. If anybody here lives near Tampa on December 12th, which also happens to be my birthday, exciting. Uh, I am going to be performing at the Cuban Club Theater. Uh, it's called Road Rage Tampa. Dick Masterson's putting it on. Uh, Dick Masterson, if you don't know, he's like a YouTuber, big YouTuber. He's putting it on. I have no idea what to expect, but it should be fun. But at the very least, it's going to be warm. It's going to be sunny. I'm going to get go down to Florida where it seems like there are no rules. It is amazing how, you know, some places can just based off of essentially like, I don't like, I don't know if culture is the word, but like Florida, they're just like, yeah, we just don't care as much. We we're fine with more people dying. I don't know if they're just like more of like, you know what? Everybody just deal with yourselves. If you're worried about COVID, then stay inside. And if you're not, live your life. Whereas other places like New York, I guess, I don't know. They're just, are the healthcare systems worse? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But it is amazing because like, you know, you see stuff in Florida and there's just like comedy clubs are open. There's just bars are packed. Nobody's wearing a mask. It's almost like they don't have COVID. Or they don't care. But, you know, COVID, like, it's crazy because, because uh, you know, I'm, I'm not of the camp that, like, COVID's not real or everything. Like, it definitely is real. But, uh, I you know, I take moderate precautions. I don't really, I don't know anybody, who, especially nobody, like, young. I know, obviously, like, you know, people, like, everybody, you know, I know people who know people who have died or whatever. But a comedian I know, is like, this was actually pretty crazy. A comedian I know, a Canadian one. He just randomly posted last week where he's like, you know, on his Instagram where, where a friend of his died. And he's like, you know, rest in peace. I'm so sorry. And so it was this guy. He didn't look like he was that old. Again, you never know anybody's underlying conditions. Um, and I didn't dig too much into it. But he looked, I saw a picture of him. He looked fairly healthy. So his Instagram is basically, actually, let me see if I can uh, pull this up really quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for... Uh, I wasn't going to talk about this and then I just kind of popped into my mind. So now I'm, I'm stalling a bit, but I'm going to have it up pretty quickly. Uh, okay. So it's, it's pretty wild. So this is, um, so this is the guy, I'm not going to say his name cause I don't know if that's appropriate. He seemed like he's probably 50 years old. Maybe I don't know if he had any sort of health conditions, so I can't say maybe he's in his forties. Um, so, uh, you know, 
He just his 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 Instagram was just normal. He he lived in uh, I think he lived in out Western Canada. So on let's see what day this is, uh, November twentieth. So it's currently December for no, or November thirty. You'll be listening to this on December first. So he goes at the emergency room because my breathing has suddenly gotten worse. Had a lot of symptoms till now, but don't have my test results yet. Right, and then uh. The next day, it says, currently also going through chills, but my temperature is 39.5 Celsius, which is bad. Uh, what would I be at if I was going through the sweats? I don't know. And then next one. Uh, and this is all like, these are all, you know, this is the same day. And these are just text posts on Instagram. It goes, so fever has gone down and my lung capacity has increased. So I don't have to shallow breathe to avoid a coughing fit so bad. It would either make me want to vomit or crack my lower ribs again. This is a good sign. Waiting to do a chest x-ray now. Then the next one, which is, this is all the same day, November 21st. So he goes, so may have spoken too soon. I can feel the harsh coughing that limited my breathing coming back. X-ray is apparently showing signs of COVID-19. Unfortunately, there's nothing they can apparently do for me if I don't need oxygen, so I'm getting sent home. And this is in Canada where they have like really good health care or whatever. Uh, next one, this is the same day. Good news, taking two each of extra strength Tylenol for the fever, ibuprofen for the pain, vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc to ward off the... Uh, it says Brady Canaan, but I think it's storm, but it's, I think he means cytokine storm or whatever. Maybe, I don't know. I can wrong. Uh, and oil of oregano overall does, does allow me to sleep. Bad news. Results confirmed COVID-19 positive. Taking another dose of all that now and going to sleep again. Now this is November 22nd. So this is like two days after he's not feeling well. Um, so last night overslept my doses, woke up with chills, extreme fatigue and weakness. It was practically paralyzing. When I struggled to get my meds, went to the bathroom for diarrhea, a new symptom for me. And today I vomited, also a new symptom. Now here is uh, November 24th, I think. Uh, yeah. Been suffering badly, so couldn't update, but want to talk about the severe weakness. Even the simplest things are exhausting. Brushing my teeth required me to rest afterwards. Even chewing a little requires me to take a break in between. Stairs are a daunting process. Then uh, the next day, breathing has become very difficult. Every few breaths I go into, a coughing fit. Last night was, was one strong enough to make me vomit. It's so brutal, it doesn't allow me a chance to recover. Sad face. And then basically, he's dead. Like, and this is, I, I, again, I don't know this guy's background at all, but he's not like, this guy wasn't, you know, 90 years old or 80 years old. Maybe he had some sort of underlying condition. Who knows? But it's pretty fucked up. Like, you know, it, it is one of the things. And, you know, people, um, people do, uh, die of you know as much as like you know it's 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 i guess random you know people you know you can take precautions and not get hit by a bus some people get hit but i was actually at a comedy show so i was at the stand this is actually crazy so kind of i guess a similar thing but i was at the stand comedy club i was i think i was hosting and i was talking to this guy you know a friend of his who uh was there and he was like really out of it and he was like kind of limping he, he kind of he's a strange dude but so he basically says he's like yeah i uh i got hit by a car today i was like what do you mean you got hit by a car he's like yeah i just i had to go like give myself a pain medication inject like an injection that my friend gave me he seemed like he had a bad concussion because like you know he just like he seemed really fucking like not there in the head but so he's like yeah i just go for myself like this injection and like change my bandage or something because i guess he didn't go to the hospital and i'm like what happened and he's like yeah, I was like on the I was on the Upper East Side in New York and I was just standing on the sidewalk and like standing on the actual sidewalk and a car jumped the curb, s hit him and then just drove away and they couldn't I he said he said they think they maybe got the person's license plate but basically it was like a hit and run, hit him and just drove away and that was it. I'm like that's fucking crazy. But to go back to the whole COVID thing is like, you know, you can take as many precautions as you want, but sometimes you're just going to get hit by a car waiting across the street. Like, it's not like the number of people who get hit by a car just, you know, on the sidewalk waiting across the street is not zero. But anyways, I don't know how that's related to COVID, I guess, in the sense that, you know, people can take as many precautions as they want in terms of COVID. But you might just you might just be that guy who just gets and fucking dies. But it is uh, it is crazy. But so speaking of COVID, but again, is it worth shutting everything down for those 
random people. Like, you know, obviously if it was like, oh, 20% of people all this is happening to, then you'd be like, shut this shit down. Uh, but who knows? But so the, the, this is the segue, uh, is going to my, my hometown kind of, kind of my hometown, Toronto. I'm not originally from there, but I'm from close to there. Uh, but I lived there for 10 years before I moved to New York. Uh, but so they're quite the to do in Toronto, uh, Adamson barbecue. So there's a barbecue place. If you don't know, there's a place in Toronto. It's called Adamson barbecue. Uh, it's run by this guy. His name is something something Skelly, Adam Skelly. Uh, it was a big barbecue place. You know, people considered it one of the better barbecue places in Toronto. So he had two locations, one in the East End, which when it opened was like had these crazy lineups. And then I guess he opened one in Etobicoke, which is like on the West End. So uh, Toronto's in a full lockdown at the moment where just everything's closed. Like all restaurants can only, you can only do like takeout and curbside pickup. There's no dining in. There's no outdoor dining, even though it's probably freezing there. So why would you want to? Uh, so anyways, he basically said, he's like, you know what? Fuck this. These lockdowns are destroying businesses, I guess. And he's a bit of like a, like an anti-masker type dude. He's like, you know, he, he apparently he's into QAnon from what I heard. He's just in all these things. You know, he's, he, he's out there. He's in the conspiracy theories. So he just said, he's like, you know what? He went on Instagram and he goes, fuck it. I'm opening tomorrow. This is bullshit. Uh, he's like, Hi, it's just not worth it. I, I don't agree with this. He's like, you know, look at the data. There's one, and this guy runs out, you know, this guy's not a scientist. He runs a fucking barbecue joint. He's like, look at the data. So anyways, he opens up for business, even though every restaurant's supposed to be closed with indoor dining and everything. Like just a total, just like telling them to fuck themselves. So he opens, there's a huge lineup. All people like not in masks. Uh, nobody in masks. Just, they're just, you know, just business as usual, except he's the only restaurant doing this. Uh, and so, it's, it becomes this huge news thing. And and so his original post saying that he, that he was going to open went viral. And, like, people from all over, like, the U.S. and the world are like, yeah, you go, man. Like, these lockdowns are bullshit. Basically, he just found all the, lo- like, people who thought lockdowns are bullshit on Instagram who are like, yeah, you go, man. And so he opened. It was this whole news thing. The city showed up, and they're like, the police showed up, but they didn't do anything because they kind of said there were too many people there. And they didn't issue any tickets or anything. Obviously, some people... And it's like, it's pretty split. Some people are like, yeah, way to go, man. Other people are like, you know, I'll never eat there again. Cancel my orders, blah, blah, blah. This is irresponsible. All that stuff. All that good stuff. And so he opens and then he's like, yeah, it was great. Uh, He's like, we sold out a barbecue. He's like, we'll be back tomorrow. And then he comes back tomorrow. At which point, the cops are like blocking the doors. Like they, they form... Uh, like a huge like human chain oh no this is what happened so then he reopened at, uh at which point they brought in a locksmith they brought in a locksmith to change the like to change the locks in the front door of his building so he just like but they're so stupid that they he just was like yeah there's a side door so he just went in the side door and then reopened and they're like huh all right you got us and then he reopened and then they're like all right we we got you this time and so then they and then they ended up arresting him um, for, I guess, doing all this stuff. And then, uh, he, he, he was like out, I think he got, he got out on bail and he has like a GoFundMe to defend himself for like, you know, I think it's almost at like $200,000 for his like legal fees, which is fucking insane. And then at one point the cops just made like a giant like chain of cops around the building. So they're, they're like, this is the only thing they could really do to stop it is they're like, and those guys make a lot of money. Like that is such a gross Gross. It, it kind of reminds me of New York when they were just like guarding statues for, you know, six months. I think they're done with the statue guarding. I think that's over because Trump lost. So they're like, they don't have to worry about the statues getting ripped down. But uh, it, just, you know, all the defund the police, because all the defund the police people are also pro lockdown people. So it's weird because like, you know, the, these police are like kind of helping them on the lockdown front. But then also you're like, this is such a fucking waste of money. And they're idiots, too, because like, these aren't like these are the same police who changed the locks on the front and for, missed the whole side door part. So anyways, this guy has become this kind of like lockdown martyr, dude. Uh, and every and, you know, and so it's. It, you know, some people are obviously really pissed at it. I, you know, I know people who are like, fuck this guy. This is white because he's a white guy. He's like, this is white privilege. That came out because you're like, I guess, I don't know, a black or any sort of non-white person would never consider um, 
doing that, I guess. I, I don't know. It seems like it's probably not white privilege. It's just he just doesn't care. I don't I don't know if if you were like, a, you know, a black barbecue shop owner, if you'd be treated any differently. If anything, you'd probably be treated at this point a little better. Uh, but anyways, people were. And then the, the funniest thing is because I know people who were who started being like yeah this guy serves like white supremacists or whatever and the reason and like white nationalists because uh there's this guy who lives around there his name's paul from oh this is another thing too is the guy didn't even have, so apparently he didn't even have a valid business license it wasn't even like he's like yeah i have my val he's like he didn't even have a valid business license he's like i'm opening anyways and people are like this is white privilege uh which is just i don't, I don't know how that comes into it but then people are like fuck this guy anybody who like supports him he's like you're you're we're not friends anymore like i know people who said that and then, and they were talking about how, like, you know, white nationalists support this guy. And when they said, it's funny how, like, that happens uh, because, like, you know, if you took a Venn diagram of white nationalists and, like, pro maskers, it's pretty small. Usually, like, but not obviously all anti mask people are white supremacists. It's like, you know, 99.999% of them are not. But then it's interesting how, like, it can just kind of soil the whole thing. So there's one guy, his name's Paul Fromm. He's this, like, he's this um, Canadian. Essentially, he is a white nationalist. He's, like, a self-professed white nationalist who, really weird, like, kind of crazy dude, old guy. So he just showed up to support the barbecue place and basically, like, eat barbecue. It's not like he was, like, flying a swastika or anything. People just know who he is. So he showed up and then... Just by the act of him like buying brisket, all of a sudden people are like, this place is supported by white nationalists. And it's so like just insane because it's like it has nothing to do with it. But it's so easy to just, you know, if you're you, to want to like deride and talk shit about this business, then like the easiest thing to do is being like, yeah, not only is he like flouting the law and, and, uh, and you know, it's caused spreading COVID, but he's supported by white nationalists. This guy might as well be a white nationalist. And like, it's just the easiest way to shut it down. Like, um, it's Paul from, I knew of him because when I did my free speech comedy show, these kids who went to uh, the university of Toronto were like helping me with the show. And they were like, I forget what club they were in. They were some some sort of like conservative club and they were like some of them, I think a couple of them were in the Proud Boys, but this was like in 2017 where like it was before they were like a white nationalist group or whatever, like because one of the kids was Indian, like he was like an Indian kid from India and he's like, yeah, he's like, we're not white nationalists. He's like, most of us aren't white in this like Toronto chapter. He's like, we're just like a drinking club slash like trolls or whatever. But so... He was telling me about how I don't know, I was like, how did you guys get labeled as like white nationalists and like and uh, and like basically there was a University of Toronto Jordan Peterson where he was a professor there. He gave some sort of like this talk, like one of the first things where he was like a YouTube thing where he was outside and he was like confronted by these like you know, queer, like non-binary people because of like the stuff with the pronouns. And then this Paul Fromm guy was basically just standing in like far distance, just observing, watching it. And then it got where they're like, oh, Paul Fromm, this this uh, white nationalist like supports Jordan Peterson. And it's like, it's so easy to get linked like that. It, it would be funny because obviously he's crazy and you couldn't get him to do it. But like just to hire him to, if you have any sort of like enemy and you go, you're like, like you know, if you're a business like you're, you're, I don't know, like a fucking steakhouse or a burger joint and you just want to get rid of your, your competitors. You go, hey man, uh, here's a hundred bucks. Dinner's on me. Just go over there and just, you know, become a regular <laughs> at this place. And then you just take a bunch of photos and be like, look, this white supremacist eats at Chuck's Burger Barn. And then you just get it shut down because it seems to be that easy uh, to just shut shit down. Speaking of Jordan Peterson, he's back. He's not dead. It seems like he almost died. Uh, but he was in the news this week because he's got a new book coming out. I didn't read his first one. Um, but the reason I bring this up is because it was a bit of a to-do. So I guess the, his publisher is called uh, Penguin Random House. And uh, so they were in the news because um, they had this... They had a a number of staff they had an, an emotional town hall over the company's decision to publish his latest book uh this is according to vice uh where a number of staff had uh, meltdowns 
and dozens of employees have filed anonymous complaints, the report notes. So basically, he has a new book. It's called Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life. It's crazy that he had his first book where he's like, 12 Rules of Life. And then, wait, you're telling me there's actually 24 Rules of Life, Jordan Peterson? You should have probably mentioned that before you put out the first 12. Because they, they can't be, like, equally weighted rules. And like I imagine the first 12 were like, these are the important 12. This next 12 are like, mm, you don't really need these 12. It's the first 12 that I feel. Because they can't be 24 rules total. And all these people who are like, you know, this thing saved my life, blah, blah, blah. They're like, it's not like the 12 extra rules are going to be a big difference. Who knows? But uh, anyways, all these people were like, so um, at Penguin Random House, uh, some employee was like, he's an icon of hate speech and transphobia. Imagine being like an icon of hate speech. He's like, he's never said anything hateful. The most, the worst thing he ever did was he's like, yeah, I'm like, I, you can't make me use pronouns. He hasn't even said he wouldn't. He just says, he's like, you just can't make me which seems like a reasonable position in a society that values uh, free speech. But anyways, and so now all these like people, because, you know, obviously the type of person who works at a book publisher is the type of person who probably hates Jordan Peterson. Like there can't be a ton of people working in publishing who are like huge Jordan Peterson fans, like conservative people who are all like into Ben Shapiro. It's probably the opposite. They're all probably like the same type of people who work as like a librarian. Uh, but it's just so funny that, this this company where they're like, yeah, we're a book publisher, and then people are literally crying over a book from like a professor from the University of Toronto. But I guess that's where we're at. It's not even like it's not even surprising at this point. That's almost what what you would expect. Like, although I don't know if they a lot of people said they were blindsided because the company just was like, like kind of last minute. We're like, hey, we're just we're putting out this book. And then the people are like, well, like we, ha- we, we have to work here. And you're like, yeah, you, I'm sure you put out books that these people approve of that other people are like, don't like either. Not to the point that it make them cry. I can't imagine crying over a book, like the contents of any book that would make me fucking have tears coming out of my eyes. It's, it's hard to believe, but you know, I guess some people are. Some people are like that. Speaking of actually uh the the Toronto Toronto. I got criticized actually recently cuz I don't say I, I I did this thing on TikTok about that. I was talking about last week about that woman who uh that Asian reporter who got that woman's restaurant canceled or whatever and then I said Toronto cuz I guess now that I live in America everybody here says Toronto and I never really said Toronto. I thought that was like I don't know. I just never said Toronto. I said Toronto and then all these people were like he's not from Toronto. I don't know. I don't know if I say Toronto now, if it's just because I'm here. I, I can't I can't even remember, you know? It's like I, I have to go back and listen to see if I ever said it before. I don't know. It's like I'm gaslighting myself. Does that make sense? I don't, I don't know. I don't know the correct use of the term um, gaslighting. But talking about this, um, the Adamson Barbecue place, because I think they're now they're officially closed. They're definitely closed down. And I can't tell if they, they like, uh, it, time will tell if he fucked himself over and tarnished, like, you know, the restaurant so badly that when everything comes back, people are going to be like, fuck you. But there are a lot of people, especially a lot of small business owners who, you know, they're getting fucked in another lockdown. I, I don't know exactly what the government in Canada is doing for small businesses, but like, it's bad in America in certain places, especially in New York. It is not good. A lot of businesses are struggling. A lot of businesses are going under. And the thing is, like, you know, because they're just today was Cyber Monday and there's Black Friday. And it's like the only businesses that reap the rewards of these Black Friday, Cyber Mondays are the businesses that were never at risk of going under in the first place. It's like, yeah, Best Buy and all these giant corporations, they're just doing better. But it's like, you know, fucking mom and pop stores don't do Black Friday shit. So they're only getting fucked worse. It'll be interesting to see how many are just straight up gone but uh this this is definitely uh not good for them so there's you know there's businesses who are just kind of saying fuck it but so in staten island new york there's a bar uh <laughs> a pub that had a li- that lost its liquor license due to covid rules because it basically was you know skirting the rules so it's now declared itself an autonomous zone and it's just continuing to do business the bar is called max public house of course it is in staten island and they basically have said we refuse to abide by any rules and regulations put forth by the mayor of new york city 
and governor of New York State. They also painted autonomous zone on the sidewalk outside the bar and put signs in the window claiming, as of November 20th, 2020, we hereby declare this establishment an autonomous zone. First off, I don't know if you can just do that. I don't know that, like, imagine, uh, like, that's all it is. They go, oh, shit. Like, the cops show up and go, oh, shit, I didn't realize this was an autonomous zone. I wish you would have spray painted the sidewalk a little earlier so we could have known not to find you and shut down your business nonstop. Like, wh- what a genius. Those guys probably got shit-faced and they go, how do we... How do we save Max? How do we save this pub? And someone's like, I got it. We just spray paint an orange spray paint autonomous zone on the front sidewalk. Boom, we're an autonomous zone. Problem solved. But so they had their uh, liquor license revoked by the state, slapped with thousands of dollars in fines uh, because Staten Island got moved to orange zone um, because it's an orange zone. I don't know what that means, but... Uh, it means that they have to shut it down. And then now the guy's like, you know what? At this point, we're okay with it because we're not paying it. And then they keep just getting these $1,000 fines nonstop, uh, which I, I must say, the one thing, because I, I li- like, look, with the COVID thing, I understand bars being shut down because like an actual bar bar, like I, it's hard to imagine that after COVID, a single nightclub will reopen. Like those are the ones where you're like, they, they weren't able to do any sort of like takeout you know, like there were some bars in Manhattan during the summer where they were, were doing like to go drinks. But like, yeah, once it gets cold, especially if it gets like once it gets cold to go drinks, that's over. Like you're you're done with to go doing to go drinks. I mean, they're probably done with to go drinks already. Like that was a strictly warm weather thing. There's no more to go drinks. So you have to think bars and most bars and clubs will not reopen uh, in any of the strict lockdown places because they're just fucked. But like the whole thing um, with, you know, how the government's essentially saying, oh, these are these businesses are essential. And they're just again, they're just picking these giant corporations. And I don't know if their idea is that, you know, we can just pick these these companies or businesses because they can serve more people. But the fact is, is that like if you're worried about, you know, density of people then giving them less chance, like less places to go to seems like you're going to be packing them in more. It just, a lot of the stuff does not make sense. And a lot of people are rightfully fed up with it. And I, I, you know what, if I was a small business owner and I was at the point where I'm like, yeah, like if I don't do all this crazy shit, like turn my bar into an autonomous zone, I'm going to lose it anyways. You might as well fucking, you might as well do it. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's uh, interesting times um that we are are living in we are stuff has not been we haven't been running out of stuff but i don't know if this is a black i wonder if this is a big black friday product but i came across this thing where so uh toilet paper started to get short short again i guess people were just I guess some in certain places people are preparing for a lockdown i mean you know there's fucking some clown who still has toilet paper from like March, who's like, just bought, who's like, you know what? I I lost my job and I'm just going to be a toilet paper salesman. I'm going to buy toilet paper, mark it up 300%. Boom, I'm going to be fucking rich. But so people um, have been buying toilet paper. And then, so you know, you can like, you can search, like uh, Google has like their search trends and stuff. And bidets, bidets in uh, America are are getting a lot of search heat. I guess people are like, you know what? That would be so funny if that's just like an outcome of like one of the outcomes of COVID where it's like, you know, business tra- like people never go back to the same amount of business travel because they realize like why fly across the country for a meeting? We could do Zoom and then, you know, just like all these little things. But then also people are like, yeah, I don't use toilet paper anymore. I just wash my ass. I never I've used the bidet there. I never really used the proper bidet. The closest thing is is when I was in Thailand uh, I went to Thailand and they don't have a bidet so much as like you just have a garden hose, but like it has like the spray gun on it, like part. And so you go and you take a shit or whatever, but it's so hot there. It's like, you know, 100 degrees Fahrenheit or something when you're there, you know, it's like 40 Celsius, something like crazy hot. And then you just have this hose and you use the hose, but it's so refreshing. It's nice and cold. It's a cold ass hose. Uh but anyways, yeah, so bidets. But I didn't see any. I was looking at Amazon. I didn't really. Uh, the only thing I bought for Black Friday was a toothbrush. That's how exciting my life is right now. I bought a black, fr- my my only Black Friday slash Cyber Monday. No, I bought a Black Friday because I need a new toothbrush. My toothbrush is so old. I have one of those like old, like, a, you know, electric Sonicare toothbrush. I, and I was like, I was thinking about it. I'm like, I bought that like 
seven years ago. Those things are not meant to last that long. Like the whole plastic on it was falling apart. The thing was gross. I'm like, I can't believe I put that on my mouth. But I am disgusting. Uh, so that's that's where we're at with that Black Friday stuff. Um, I managed to go this whole time without talking about Trump so far. That, that's got to be some sort of record. It's amazing. Like, I got to say, I'll just say this now because for no other reason than I had some friends on Twitter who like, you know, we're just their Twitter was comedy basically pre Trump and then Trump got in and then their Twitter just went to entirely Trump. Like there's every day they would tweet about Trump and then now it's like it's just over. Like he's you know, he's done and then they kind of like don't know what to do with themselves. You go look at their tweets and they're like they're trying to become like regular people again, but you could tell they're they're almost like institutionalized to Trump. Like I know several people who like they they're trying to stay in the political realm to just I guess like you know just put put the final final nail in the coffin of Trump so they'll like just do some some but like you know Trump's basically done he's not basically done he is done it's there's if he somehow pulls this out I know I can't see him pulling it off there's still people too like you go on Twitter and there's all these people who are like he still has a chance man he's it's you know, he still has a, it's, it's not a big chance, but he still has, it's like, he's basically conceded, but they're like, he still has a chance. He's going to do it. He's going to, it's 5d chess. Trump's going to pull it out, which it's sick that there is a part of me that hopes that happens just for the spectacle, just to see the crazy fucking crazy shit that'll happen. People will lose their goddamn minds. Um, so I got a couple, a couple COVID things couple news items actually you know what we'll go to the world of sports break it up with a little sports who doesn't like some good sports you know i do uh so this is a kind of uh i don't know if funny story is is the word but so this this kicker a female kicker uh on vanderbilt her name's sarah fuller and so the big thing is uh, uh vanderbilt they lost their kickers, I think, to maybe COVID. I mean, the main thing to understand is they're t- they're a terrible team. They're really fucking bad, right? They're so bad. This is how bad they are. So they lost all their kickers, and so they needed a kicker, and they went to the soccer team, the women's soccer team, and they got this woman. Her name's Sarah Fuller, and everybody's making this huge deal out of the fact that Sarah Fuller, and she's the first female kicker in the Power Five, which is some conference that Vanderbilt plays in, and so she made history as the first kicker and, and she only got one kick. That's the funny thing. Cause, cause I, I kept watching the thing and be like, where are the other kicks? But she only got one. The team lost 41 to zero. They're terrible. They are so bad that she didn't even get in for a, they didn't even get in field goal range. But again, I guess I don't know what her field goal range is. Like, I don't know if there was ever an opportunity for her to get a field goal or if they were like, she just can't kick a field goal, get close. But so she got one kick off. She kicked off to start the second half because I guess they returned to start the first half. Like it's and she's not a punter. She's just like a kickoff kicker, which seems weird that they couldn't get their punter to do it. I, I don't know. Like whatever. But so she did one kick and like so I go to watch it. I'm like I just want I want to see this kick. And like I feel bad. But the kick was like I don't know, 30 yards maybe? Like, I'm pretty sure with a week or two of training, I'm like a fucking out of shape 36-year-old. Like, with, you know, a couple weeks of training, I feel like it wasn't, like, it was not a good kick. And it almost, like, makes you feel bad because they're they're making it like, oh, my God, this is historic. But then you're like, oh, this is such, like, a token thing because it's not like, she's not, like, paving the way for females. Like, this isn't, she didn't just break the four-minute mile. Like, this isn't, like, paving the way for females. If anything, this was, like, you know, reinforcing the fact that, yeah, like, they can't do this unless there's some sort of, like, massive circumstance. It's similar to, like, although not so much um, when that female goalie played for the Tampa Bay Lightning, Manon Rayon, when it, like when I was 10 years old or something, and she played, like, I think in a preseason game. I don't remember if she got lit up or not, but she played. But, like, goalie is different because you just have to stop pucks and... You know, she. I, I think I, I don't remember. I don't think she won, but and she's obviously not good enough to play in the NHL. There's no question about that. But that was like kind of a stunt, I guess, because they were like, "Who cares? It's a preseason game." But this is more like they're acting like, "Oh yeah, there's gonna be more female kickers." This was just the start, 
but the kick was so bad. And then all these people were like, was that kick? Was it, was that a designed kick where they were, she kicked it that way, like on purpose? Like, was that kick like a, you know, a strategic kick? And then you're like, no, that was just literally how she kicks. And again, I, just, I don't know. She's not a football kicker. I, I don't like, I'm not like, I'm not trying to give her shit or anything. Like she doesn't play football. She plays soccer. I'm sure she's a great soccer player, but just for them to act like, I don't know. I, Cause everybody, like, I'm not trying to like, I don't want to trash her or anything. Uh, that's not my intention here at all, but it's just weird that everybody's trying to make her out as like some sort of icon. And you're like, yeah, but it was, it was so bad. Like, I, I want to be on board with this, but it seems like, you know, you're kind of tokenizing her a bit and like, like it, it's like I don't know. I wish like it didn't have like I'm not saying she had to kick it through the back of the end zone, but this was a really bad kick. All right, that's all. I don't I don't want to I don't want to beat this to death. Kick it to death. I should have gone with kick it to death. Okay, we got to the wonderful world. We're gonna move on to the wonder, wonderful world of opioids. Uh, I just scratched my leg as I said that. So I'm sure some people are like he's on opioids. I'm not. Although I've tried them before. Not like opioid, but like I've tried like, you know, I had an Oxycontin maybe a couple of times, but I'm so allergic to them. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm allergic to synthetic like Oxycontin or whatever. And it makes my skin fucking crawl. Like I cannot stop scratching myself. It's crazy. I don't know how people do it. Plus the, the worst side effect of it is, the, um, is, uh, what is it? When you can't pee or like, like you're, you're constipated, but it's like a urinary constipation where like you really have to piss so badly, but you just can't. What a weird side effect is you just can't pee. Uh, but anyway, so Purdue Pharma, the makers of Oxycontin, they, you know, they've been in the news. They went bankrupt and they basically got sued by the Department of Justice for like $8 billion, but they made tons of money. They made tons of money. But so at one point it came out that they hired, this is so dark, that they hired uh, this company called McKinsey, which is like a suit, one of the biggest, uh, I guess they're just consultants. They're just a consulting company, a global consulting company, super vague. They'll just consult if you need help with whatever. Uh, there's a giant biggest consulting company. So McKinsey didn't know how to like boost sales. So they hired, or, or sorry, Purdue didn't know how to boost sales. So they hired McKinsey and McKinsey, someone, this is literally someone's idea to boost sales. This is like some fucking next level super villain shit is they go, uh, in order to improve their performance, they were going to offer distributors rebates for opioid overdoses. That is insane. So basically they're like, look, we, we're gonna, we got to figure out a way to boost sales. So how about this? It will just, you just sell more. And then if someone overdoses, we'll give you like a credit. And it's like, the thing is like the person who overdoses doesn't even get the credit. It's not even like the person overdosing gets the credit. It's the distributor. So essentially, this is what they say is they go, for instance, the advisors predicted in 2019 that around 2,500 CVS customers might overdose. Under a proposed rebate of $14,810 per overdose, that mean a payment to CVS of $37 million that year. Okay, so what? So CV, they're like, look, CVS, I know you're worried about your uh, customers dying. Uh, so we'll sweeten the deal. And like the thing is like, it's such a, like, it, that is like just ultra dark because they're like, I guess the worry about them dying is they're like, well, you know, this is a recurring revenue stream. This, these customers, we make money off these customers. So if they die, then there goes that money. So then <laughs> like McKinsey's like, well, look, we'll, we'll compensate you for the death. We'll give you 15 grand for every person who overdoses and dies. I don't know if it's a death or just an overdose. Like, I wonder if they're like, you know, they start splitting hairs. They go, hey, uh, so we had another overdose. And then they're like, did you, did they die? And they're like, no, they didn't die. And they're like, no, no, we don't pay out if they don't die. You only get the 15 grand. We'll give you four grand because they just had like a bad night or whatever. So $4,000, but they're, because they're going to be, you know, if they overdose, but they didn't die, they're going to want some more Oxycontin. So that's a, that's a net, net positive for everybody. That was, that was a, that was a tough one to read. I w and then there's a part where someone on McKinsey was like, they're like, wait, are, are we doing something illegal? Like, uh, so apparently, like, there were people at McKinsey who were like, yeah, maybe this is not a good idea. It says one consultant wrote to another that it probably makes sense to have a quick conversation with the risk committee to see if we should be doing anything except eliminating all of our documents and emails. Because they're like, yeah, we probably shouldn't, like, do these opioid uh, overdose rebates. It's uh, super fucked up. 
All right, we got a couple of COVID notes, and then we're going to wrap this bad boy up. So this is uh, Belgium. So Thanksgiving was basically canceled this year, even though lots of people did it secretly. They're dirty boys doing dirty Thanksgiving boys. I bet people felt like there's so many people were like, we're basically like Anne Frank hiding from the Nazis, except we're eating turkey, hiding from the government. But so in Belgium, uh, the, the, the police have basically said that on Christmas that people can expect knocks on the doors if they're not properly following COVID rules and if they're too loud. Christmas parties will be interrupted by the police just just for happening, which is that just seems like such a crazy overreach. I know not every country is like America where you're like, get the fuck off my land. Like America is like, get off my land. That's this is the country that America is, is you get the fuck off my land. Uh, That's kind of stuff wouldn't fly, although I think they do have things like that. Like in certain places where, you know, if you have a, I mean, obviously if you have a super loud party, they will break you up and, um, but you know, having like, we're not talking about some sort of like warehouse party in Brooklyn. This is like, you know, you have 12 people and just get a little drunk. So they're trying to cancel Christmas big time, which that just, they're, that that's how, you know, America is a better country than other countries. Cause for all the faults that America has, at least they don't have that. Like, imagine you're just having fucking, you're drinking some nog and getting a little boisterous. Maybe someone's dressed up as Santa Claus. And the police show up and they're like, you're not doing Christmas, are you? And you have to pretend like you're not doing Christmas. You're like, oh, no, officer. Like, you make people, like, hide in the closets. You're like, no, 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 no. It's just the two of us. We're just gotten the eggnog a little too much. We're sorry. We'll keep it down. And then, they, you know, they kind of like look around and make sure there's nobody there. And everybody's like, you know, they're like in the closet with their feet sticking out of the bottom, just hoping they don't get caught for having too much Christmas. All right. Last thing. This is this is funny. There was a uh, Scott Peterson. I don't know if you remember Scott Peterson. He's the famous dude who uh, killed his wife, Lacey Peterson. It's crazy. You can get famous for just killing your wife. I mean, I guess the, that is. That is a thing. That's like a real path to fame. It's not really useful fame because you can't do anything with it because you're like in jail forever. But a lot of people know he is Scott Peterson killed his right wife. He got uh, so this was in the L.A. Times. Um, so he was involved in this covid jobless benefits scam where apparently uh, so he, he was improved for an unemployment debit card. And got money from the government, basically saying he's unemployed. And there's all these like people on death row, because I guess he's on death. Is he on death row? Uh, yeah. So, like, yeah, th- yeah, he's on. He is near. He is on death row. And then all these other people on death row got uh, busted for these like employment benefits scams, COVID employment benefit scams, and then. Uh, they're, you know, people are trying to figure out, they're just basically figuring out how inefficient the government is and how much they waste fucking tons of money, which is understandable. If you have to roll out these crazy COVID things, like essentially overnight, there's going to be, there's going to be some screw ups. There's no question about that. But so like his, and then it's funny because Peterson's attorney is like, yeah, he wasn't involved. It's absolutely certain. Like who cares if he was involved? He's on death row. Like I, is this the kind of thing where they're like, look, all right, we're going to have to move up your execution. You stole uh Twelve hundred dollars, Scott. So, you know, we're trying to be lenient with you, but like, you're on death row. How much worse can it get? Like, is there anything they can take away from you? You go, like, imagine, like, that's what you're worried about—is defrauding taxpayers when you murdered your wife. I don't know. That's what I would do. Uh, But apparently, there's like a hundred. They're saying something like a hundred forty million dollars has been sent to people incarcerated, like, accidentally on scams good system they got going there no wonder so many people are fucking leaving california it looks nice though i saw this hockey player who i follow on instagram sean avery he was living in new york and then he just was like i moved to california he just posted today he goes i'm out of new york look nice i mean the winter here not looking forward to it it's gonna fucking i mean every winter is gonna suck the people who had to do i guess nobody has had to do two full winters yet so i guess that's something but if th- th- that's almost like the only good takeaway, because like if lockdown started in like, you know, September of last year, ugh, 
That would have been so much worse if you had to do two full winters. Like if you're in the East Coast and you had two winters of lockdowns, would have been a nightmare. Anyways, that's it for me. I'm just rambling now. Thank you to everybody who's listening or watching on YouTube. I appreciate you. If you enjoy the podcast, leave a review, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.